All right, this is John with the Garmin Marine Team back to do part two of our deep dive into the traditional sonar settings on the Garmin GPS map series. Let's go ahead and get started. So just as a refresher, these are the units really that we're going over. It's the current GPS map series. Um, also covering the 7600 XSV series. Um, for this, I use the 8612 XSV for the screenshots. And what I wanted to cover, and a lot of this comes from talking to dealers and consumers to do a deeper dive into our sonar setting. So in front of us is our traditional sonar, and we wanted to dive in there and kind of get some of the more advanced features keep this in mind though the auto settings and the way everything is defaulted out of the box generally are those are some of the best settings right out of the box so you don't have to do a deep dive into our settings but you have that ability to do so if you think you need to improve some of the screen and uh, appearance of what your traditional sonar will look like part one so we covered some software updates overlays Sonar setups, including scroll speeds, noise rejection, TVG. In this one, we want to go into appearance, which is going to cover color scheme. A scope, really important. So something I like to use and underutilized, I believe, on our sonars. Alarms, we're going to go into some advanced features, shift, bottom search limit, and installation. Um, installation, what I'm covering is this transducer on your boat has already been installed. So we want to take it from there. It's when you don't see your transducer, it's not appearing on the screen, and you need to go into some of our advanced settings through our display to identify those transducers. So let's go into first uh, talk about appearance. The way I did it is obviously. If you remember this with Garmin, you only really need to learn the home button and menu button, and you're going to be able to do 90 plus percent of any kind of customization or changing of screens on a Garmin unit. That's why we make it really easy for you guys to use uh, the Garmin units. What we wanted to do is we come into menu and we select color scheme. And let's take a look here. So menu. Sonar setup, appearance, and color scheme. What this allows us to do is change your color palette to something else. So default is blue. You can go in and people like to change this because sometimes it's easier to be, for people to see the screens in a different color. The fish and the structure become more predominant. And so it's a simple way you can go in, change your screen, customize it to the way you want to see it. Color gain. You can adjust the intensity of the color. Um, this is going to highlight the um, color gain. And remember, this is on traditional transducers. So the way that we do it is under appearance. We'll select color gain and try this. So the default setting is great, but try a negative eight on the color gain to help identify between hard and soft bottom, okay? Remember this because we're also gonna do something different on echo stretch in order for those arches here or chevrons become a little bit more predominant or easy to see. So we wanna take, like for instance, this structure down here, which is probably, you know, red rubble or concrete or something really solid. And we've got a lot of fish stacked on top of each other here, larger fish right here. So what we wanna be able to do is identify that hard bottom and then also be able to see the fish on the screen itself in either a arch or a chevron or later on as symbols appearing on the screen itself. 
So just try that. Remember, the default setting is fine, but if you want to try this, this is what some of our pros, we actually have them set up as. Um, so let's move on here. A scope. I would say this is probably one of our most underutilized advanced settings that you're going to see. What A scope allows you to do is it adds this column right here. Okay. So same thing under appearance, you're going to go into uh, A scope and turn that on. What A scope does is it gives you this. Um, identifier, which allows you to see targets in real time scrolling across the screen. It also gives us down on the bottom here a number. So that's how much of the bottom that we're actually viewing. OK, so remember, traditional 2D sonar puts that signal into the water like a cone or like a flashlight beam. And with that, we're seeing 80 feet of the bottom in this particular depth. But the other reason why I like a scope is anything within this water column or with the bottom that you see here. So let's say we've got some structure that's coming up. It's going to instantaneously, right when I go over that, paint this in this column here. Okay. I like to use it if I'm bottom fishing because it gives me a quick identifier of structure. So if I'm looking for, you know, maybe bread rubble, concrete, a large rock, maybe a sunk boat, I can go in here and boom, see that quickly on the screen. I can then throw a buoy over to mark that particular position so I can go back to it. You also have the ability, if you notice over here, peak hole. So what peak hold allows us to do is pick between one and five seconds how long that image is going to actually stay on the screen. So maybe it was, you know, a couple of fish here that we were targeting. We wanted to see those a little bit longer until it actually painted it on our history screen here. So that is the A scope. It's a really good addition to add on to your sonar just under your settings depth line very simple very easy uh same thing if we're going in here we're going to be under appearance we go into depth line hidden is the default we can turn it on and this just gives us a reference point uh in this instance here we've got 253 feet and that tells us you know if we're targeting fish at a certain depth it just gives us a better visual reference to that particular depth. Edge. So what edge will do is it actually highlights the strongest signal from the bottom to help define hardness or softness of that signal. Okay, same thing. Very simple. Turn edge defaults to off. We can turn it on and then this will give us you know, the visual picture of a harder or softer bottom. Keep in mind that these are screenshots from a sonar simulator here. Fish symbols. So we actually added this. This was a feature that was in some of our uh, Echo Map series, and now we've added the fish symbols into the GPS map series. And this shows us how to interpret so uh, suspended targets in the water column itself. Turn off, uh, fish symbols are turned off. So <clears throat> it really depends on how you like these suspended targets to appear to you. Uh, I generally like the arches or chevrons. After a while, once you start to learn these, you can really determine the size of the fish. You know, I, I can kind of tell these are smaller bait fish um, right there. That's a really good sized fish holding close to the bottom. But you also have that option to come in and turn fish symbols on. So with that, this is going to give us either off, which is what it's defaulted to here, 
or one of four different choices in the fish symbols. So the first one here, this will show a suspended target and the background sonar information. So it's just going to overlay this little fish symbol over these targets that are already here. You can also add the same thing with a number. So that's going to give a specific depth number to that particular fish. You can do it just as the symbols with no numbers. And then you can do it with the symbol and the number with no background sonar information. So let's take a look and see. We're going to choose this bottom one here. And so it kind of cleans up the screen a little bit. It targets those particular fish or whatever is suspended within that depth range. It gives us a depth. So if we're targeting fish at, you know, 160 to 180 feet, you know, we've got a few kind of holding on there. Uh, maybe the bigger fish are a little bit lower. So this allows us to go in and just give us another way to customize the way that we see targets on the screen itself. Pick advance or picture advance. This is really important. Um, we want to make sure also your software is up to date. So if you go into your unit and you're just listening to this webinar and going back to your uh, chart plot or sonar and trying to pull up some of these features, you might not see this in your appearance menu. You might not see fish symbols or picture advance. So um, make sure that you have your software up to date. And if you notice here, the last software release as of this webinar recording, we added the sonar picture advance. What does that do for you? So this is really important. Um, are there times that you want this screen to scroll faster? Okay, so we can, yes, increase the scroll rate. All right, um, but that's still giving us one column of data. Okay, um, the way we can do this is come down, the picture advances defaulted as one to one. And we can then select one to one, two to one, and so forth. This is especially helpful when you're using the sonar in deeper water. Um, because that signal takes so much longer to get back, if you increase it, and you can do it all the way up to eight to one, you're, you're getting those returns much faster and be able to paint that screen a little bit better, quicker, let's say. So let's select the eight to one. And this is actually the screenshot here. So a one-to-one -one setting draws one column of information on the screen per sound or return. Two to one draws two and so forth. And this is eight to one. So deeper water, I might want this screen to advance from right to left quicker. You notice that my arches or chevrons are elongated or kind of stretched out a little bit but I'm getting that information back, you know, eight times faster when we're actually doing this picture advance. So very beneficial, kind of my go-to here uh, when fishing in deeper water. Echo stretch, this is very important too. And we've talked about a little bit in the color game, but echo stretch is our next selection here under picture advance. And this adjusts the size of the echoes. Okay, so this is just determining when we're doing the echo stretch, not for fish symbols, but for the echo stretch. Um, we wanna be able to see those a little bit more predominantly on the screen. And how do we do that? Or what have we seen done that works out really well? So let's select echo stretch and increase that to a plus two. What we found, and this can vary, this can vary in your, you know, the type of water that you're fishing, fresh or salt water, but if you feel that you're not seeing these arches or chevrons as well as you should, increase the echo stretch to a plus two, just to start with, okay? Don't jump all the way up to a 10. Go to plus two, all right? and then a minus eight on the color game. 
And what that's going to do is this number here will help with your echo stretch on your targets, arches and chevrons, and then minus eight, your color gain is going to help define between hard and soft. Alarms. We have quite a few different alarms. Now this is dependent upon your transducer. So just keep that in mind. Under sonar setup, let's go ahead and select alarms. And you notice here we have from shallow water, deep water, front view alarm. What is front view? Well, if you have our pan optics PS51, that's a through hull forward facing sonar for collision avoidance. This is where you could turn an alarm on to maybe give you shallow water alerts in front of your vessel, but you have to have a transducer that would support that. Likewise, with water temperature, if your transducer doesn't have water temperature on there, you're not going to see this option on there to be able to turn on and off. You also have contour and fish. So what we want to do in this example here, let's go in and talk a little bit about contour. This is where we can turn on the contour alarm and it gives us a range. So what we can do is pick a specific range, shallow and deep, and within, as long as we're within that range, we'll, we will not hear an alarm. If we tra travel shallower than, let's say, 150 feet, an alarm will sound. So if we're targeting species within a certain portion of the water column, we can turn on contour alarm and get that information on the screen here. Um, giving us the audible alarm. Let's go into some advanced features here. So under the advanced settings, we are going to select shift. So let's take a look at shift. This allows you to set the depth range on which the sonar is focused. You can use zoom to focus in an area. But what the shift allows you to do is get a, um, a better return, better target return with higher resolution than just using zoom alone. So let's take a look here. So select shift. And now the slider appears here and I can slide that to that particular depth that I'm targeting here. And if you notice, you get really crisp, good looking target separation on the screen itself. Good sized fish right there, you know, really good sized fish holding on the bottom. So you can utilize shift to your advantage to really get good high resolution images closer to that targeted area that you're looking at. Bottom search limit. So what does this do? Um, this really limits the depth selected um, that you want this sonar to actually search, okay? Auto obviously is the default settings, but what we have the ability to do is go into bottom search limit and pick a range. So if there was a particular range that I didn't want this sonar to, you know, dive deep down to, and I'm, I'm only really targeting 300 foot depth, you can um, maximize your screen to that particular depth, okay? Um, it minimizes the time it takes to find the bottom itself, so it's not searching. You might not get that flashing, okay? if you set it for that particular depth. If you're deep diving, you know, you're, you're deep dropping um, and you're targeting, you know, a couple thousand feet, 
you might want to set that bottom search limit on there so that sonar functions to its fullest limits. Installation. What we're going to talk about installation is your transducer is already installed. Okay, so we're not going to go through how to mount a transducer or how to cut a through haul into a boat, but we want to talk about what you do after the transducer is physically installed on the vessel itself and what that you need to do. And really, the majority of the time, you don't need to do anything other than plug the transducer into the unit itself and make sure that you have power. Turn on power. There are certain instances where you're going to have to go in, though, and customize your transducer after the install. And you do that through sonar setup, installation. And the first thing that we want to do is take a look at transmit rate. So I want to make sure to, to reemphasize this. I very rarely dive deep into the settings on this. I use a lot A scope, I turn on, echo stretch plus two, color gain minus eight. Those are my three go-to settings. But you can also go into installation here and change the transmit rate. Increasing the transmit rate increases the scroll speed, um, but it also might increase interference, okay? So do this in small increments if you're actually adjusting transmission rate. If you decrease the or reduce the transmit rate, uh the spacing between the transmission pulses um can help to solve some interference so if it's interference small interference you might be able to uh, remedy a, a small problem but just remember that the majority of it is in the installation of a transducer you know make sure your transducer cables not wrapped around heavy power cables and cable tied and bundled amongst that because these aren't going to remedy those situations but it can help in a small instance to where you can change that uh, transmission rate transmit power so same thing uh, reduces transducer ringing near the surface uh, this option is available on traditional sonar views only as is with the last one too so a lower transmission power reduces the ring, um, but your returns might also be compromised. So start with default, decrease the power. You might see some of these smaller targets start to disappear, but that might clean up the screen a little bit for you. Like I said, I very rarely dig deep into this setting here because there's probably larger issues on the vessel um, if you're getting interference, and the majority of the time is RF interference, which can be remedied using a ferret or rerouting that transducer cable. Filter width. So remember, this is traditional sonar only, and this really defines the edges of a target. So you can go shorter or longer, uh, a shorter filter, more clearly defines the edges of a target. So let's say that down here was concrete grid rubble, um, and we know we should be seeing really sharp edges on there. We can adjust this filter width in order for that to show this on the screen much better. Transducer selection. The majority of the time, like I said before, when you plug your transducer in under the auto settings, your head unit, your XSV unit, your XS Garmin GPS map unit, your black box is automatically gonna identify that particular transducer. There are certain occasions though that we might have to go in and manually adjust this if you're an installer or if you're a consumer doing this at your house. So if you take a take a look, this actually already identified my GT52 high wide transducer. I'm actually out of the water, so I uh, disabled that transducer in order to kind of show this off to you guys. So let's go in 
Same thing, we're going to select menu. We're going to go to sonar setup. We're going to go into installation and transducers. So we've actually increased the amount of transducers that are in this tab here. And if you notice right now, I'm in auto. So that means it's auto detecting my transducer. If I have a transducer plugged in, let's say I have this GT52 high wide and I have it plugged in and I don't see this on this screen here, there's something wrong. I could have corrosion on the, the, the pins for that transducer, the cable could be cut, something is wrong to where that transducer is not recognized on the screen itself. But notice too that we can actually go in and we can change the model of the transducer. So if it didn't auto detect that particular transducer, maybe it's a, an Aramar transducer or a combination of an Aramar transducer and a Garmin transducer on the boat, we can come in there and customize this. Just make sure that you remember this. You need to select the transducer model that matches the um, actual transducer that's on your unit itself or on your vessel. So don't select a transducer that's not on this list and that's connected to your boat. So what we wanna do here is come in, you notice too, we've got a lot of different selections. So if we needed to connect that uh, uh, Minn Kota trolling motor transducer or a motor guide, we can actually pick those and connect in and show that on our, our screen. So let's scroll down here and see some other options that we have here. And I'm gonna pick an option that's very popular right now. And that is the GT30 and an Aramar B60. So this is a, well, this can be, Let's say in this instance here, this is a transom out transducer that's going to give us clear view and side view. And this Airmar transducer is a traditional sonar, 50 and 200 kilohertz. Okay. So let's say we've selected that. What does that do? Why would we use this? And here's why. So this transducer right here is a GT30. TM, transom mount, all right? That has the 12 pin orange connector on it. This transducer here gives us side view and clear view. Look in that clear view, that's a, some tarpon down there, so a pretty good little picture there. So this transducer is gonna give us that, all right? This transducer is an Airmar through hull. So drill a hole through the bottom of the boat, you're gonna, this is gonna be semi flushed with the bottom of the hull itself. And this is gonna give us traditional 2D sonar in 50 and 200 kilohertz. So these are fixed frequency transducers here. Why would I do a setup like this? Well, as many of you know, with a transom mount transducer, even if you mount it perfectly, a lot of times when you're up and running and you're on a plane, you might lose your bottom. And so a through hole might be able to work a little bit better at speed. So it's getting cleaner water over the surface of that transducer so we don't lose bottom at speed. And that's the reason why a lot of people will use this combination, this transducer connected to a Y cable, connecting both transducers together, and then this 12 pin plugging into your farm and chart water. So it gives us the best of all worlds when we actually do this, because we, we can run at speed. And then when we slow down and we're searching for that structure, like those bridge pilings, and we're looking to see what's below us, we can actually see that on the screen itself. And that's why we would use this. Sometimes we need to go in and manually select that under installation. Transducer diagnostic. So if you feel that your transducer is not working or maybe everything's working and side view is not working, this is where you can come in. You can select transducer diagnostics and make sure it's actually shown here. If you don't see anything on the screen, it actually doesn't show that particular 
transducer. Maybe it's just showing uh, the chirp channel and clear view and side view are not functioning for whatever reason itself. Um, maybe all everything is functioning well and you're still worried about your transducer not giving you good images. It could have growth on the transducer that you need to clean off. Um, so just take a look. This gives you the ability to go in and identify the transducer and make sure that all the channels in that particular transducer are functioning. And at the end of the day, when we've done all this, you can go back and restore the sonar defaults. So if you feel that you've dug into this too deep and you've gone too far away from the baseline settings, you can simply go in and restore the defaults. Like I said, when I first started this, our auto settings or our default settings are great. If you're first getting out on the water with a Garmin sonar and a chart plotter, use those default settings. And then maybe custom, maybe the first things that you're gonna do after that is you're gonna turn on a scope. And maybe the next thing you might do is echo stretch a plus two and that might be great for you and then possibly customize color game but we can go in here we can restore defaults and take it back to factory settings so i want to say thank you from the garmin marine team hopefully these webinars are giving you some good information giving you a deep dive into what we can do with our garmin chart plotters and you know, we're looking at doing more of these, maybe dig into clear view and side view and give you a good understanding of how and what you're seeing with those scanning type of sonars. So as always, if you have a question pertaining to this particular webinar, uh, just put in there like sonar deep dive part two and feel free to email us at marine.training at garmin.com. I thank you very much for watching. And if you guys can get out on the water, please enjoy yourselves out on the water. And thank you very much for watching.